post-match reaction for the U.S. and the Netherlands is I thought this was one of the most exciting games I've ever seen the U.S. play. And it's kind of nice because, as I said in the last episode, when they played against Australia, it was probably one of the most boring games I've ever seen. So for them to go from the most boring game to the most exciting game, it's a really weird transition and juxtaposition that I wasn't mentally prepared for. So when they got up to the moment where they started taking penalties to decide the game, I was freaking out, I'm sure, as much as a lot of you were feeling the same exact way. So we'll start off with... I think my woman of the match, I'm going to have to give it to Lynn Williams in this case. I would say her and Alyssa Nair were the saviors for the team in this particular match. Uh, Lynn Williams, she had a goal earlier on, and then she also gave an assist to her roomie, Sam Mewis. Her and Sam Mewis have a pretty good relationship as far as I've understood. And it turned out to be the difference in the game because Viv Miedema came roaring back for the Netherlands, scoring her 10th goal for the Olympic tournament and extending her record by a lot. So good on Vivian Miedema for that. Got to give a shout out to her. But on the other side of that, or actually let me kind of go down the path of Lynn Williams just for a second here. I was really, really pumped for her to have this excellent performance because one, I didn't know if she was really going to play in this tournament, especially since she picked up a minor injury, I believe a few days before. And I think a lot of the fandom has been critical of her performances, of her finishing, things like that, myself included. And to see her rise above all that and succeed and to really help this team advance on into the later stages of this, of this tournament, it's just something you absolutely love to see and you wish nothing but the best for these players, while also being realistic and honest about their performances, if you will. So I'm really, really happy for Lynn Williams in that respect. Uh, as I said earlier, I think Alyssa Nair was a very close second in my woman of the match uh, conversation. The reason being is because Alyssa Nair had a very big save against Lika Martins on a penalty. And then going down the stretch when the U.S. and the Netherlands were taking PKs to decide the game, she had two more big saves in order to help them get over the line. So she has this knack for, excuse me. A listener has shown that she has this knack for really big performances and it's really cool again to see her just rise above the circumstances and perform well. She did it in the 2019 World Cup when Steph Houghton was coming up to take a penalty. She saved it, otherwise it would have tied the U.S. and who knows what would have happened in the 2019 World Cup. And now she's doing the same in the Olympics and like I said, it's just fantastic to see. And what makes it a little bit more interesting is I've seen in a lot of comment sections and a lot of fandom chats that a lot of people are pretty critical of Alyssa Nair. Me personally, I think she is the U.S.'s best option at keeper, but I see that a lot of people think that Ashlyn Harris is, is a better option. Some people think that they're pretty even. I happen to think they're pretty even, but I give the edge slightly to Alyssa Nair. And she continues to show now that she is one of the best options in the world. And coming out of a time when the greatest goalkeeper of all time and Hope Solo is leaving the team, it's been tough for Alyssa to make a name for herself. And I think she continues to make that case. And this game helps her cause in that respect. And like I said, at the end of the day, it gets the U.S. ever so closer to that Olympic final and hopefully an Olympic win because I believe it would be the first time in women's soccer history where a team won the World Cup and then the subsequent Olympics thereafter. So really great performances from both Lynn Williams and Alyssa Nair, and I'm really happy to see that they are progressing in their careers. Before I move on to the U.S.'s performance, I do want to highlight the play of Vivian Miedema this tournament because it should not go unnoticed. For those of you who don't know, Vivian Miedema has broken Christine Sinclair's previous Olympic record and has further extended it this game. The record was for most goals scored in a single women's Olympic competition. Christine Sinclair had set that record previously with six. Vivian Miedema has nearly doubled that. She has blown it out of the water and now has had 10 goals this competition, which I, I am a very big fan of Vivian Miedema. Since I've been talking about women's soccer, Vivian Miedema has been one of my favorite players, aside from Tobin Heath, of course. I even wrote a small paper detailing why I thought Vivian Miedema was the world's greatest striker and still is. And at the young age of 25, to see her break all these records, she is the current record holder for the WSL in goal scored. Now she's got this Olympic record. It, it just it keeps formulating my hypothesis, or I guess supporting my hypothesis, that by the time she hangs up the boots, her, her career is going to go down as one of the greatest 
of all time and it's just really awesome to see and unfold and especially so the fact that she's only 25 years old so she's probably still got six seven eight nine ten years in the tank who knows it depends on how long she's going to keep playing for i mean look at carly Lewis; she's 39 and still playing at a high level so i think we're seeing history in the making as time goes on and i hope a lot of people can learn something from the play of vivian minima plus that first goal that she had against the u.s when she just took that that slight touch and basically kind of lofted it to herself and then scored in the uh, i believe is the bottom right hand corner of the net it doesn't get much more beautiful than that. So Vivian Minima really had a, a phenomenal tournament, helped the Netherlands get far. And I was actually kind of gutted to not, I'm gutted for her to not have taken that earlier penalty that Lika Martins took because Vivian Minima was on a hat trick. She was feeling herself. She's been feeling herself all tournament long. And for Serena Wegman not to have her take that penalty in place of Lika Martins in that case was very puzzling especially with how well she's been playing this tournament so i don't know what the reasoning was behind it and we'll never know but i guess i should be glad from the u.s fan perspective because if she takes that penalty she's probably scoring it so who knows take that for what it's worth but kind of moving into the u.s's performance i think it was a lot better of a performance from them today the defense wasn't so great. I, 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 did, I just don't think anybody in the back four has really performed all that stellar really all tournament long. The one thing I will say is I thought Crystal Dunn and Becky Sarburn probably had good games, but they didn't really stand out in particular. I think Abby Dahlkemper and Kelly O'Hara have struggled this tournament, which every player will struggle at some point in their careers. But... It makes it critically important for the U.S. to be on the front foot and attacking and getting scoring opportunities because the defense might not be able to keep a clean sheet. And honestly, I don't think they will keep a clean sheet for the semifinals and the finals if they happen to beat Canada uh, tomorrow morning. So makes some really interesting questions. I don't know. It, it's, it makes me wonder about later on down the line when the likes of Sauerbrunn retire when Kelly O'Hara retires who is really going to fill their shoes and perform really really well there is a little bit of depth in the fact that Tierna Davidson and Julie Ertz can both play either centrally or Tierna Davidson could probably play outside back but it just begs interesting questions and is just kind of in the back of my mind as time goes forward now, getting into comparing the match from both teams' perspective, on paper, this was a pretty even match. Possession was 50-50, according to ESPN anyway. The number of corners, I believe the U.S. had a slight advantage over. The U.S. was offside a lot more often. I believe the count was 6-1, to one, which we'll talk about that in just a second. But, And I also believe the number of shots on goal, I believe the edge was slightly toward the Netherlands. I believe the Netherlands had seven shots on goal and the U.S. had four. Let me double check my notes real quick. I'm sorry. The Netherlands had three more shots on goal, so it could be seven to four. I, I ch check later if you guys would like. But so th the assessment that the U.S. performed better this game, I think, is spot on given the the possession stats, given the shots on goal, given the amount of set pieces, the offsides. At least the one thing I can say with the offside is that the, the U.S. hasn't stopped being aggressive. They're at least trying to get in behind and trying to make attacking runs, which is good. But at the end of the day, they've had a really big problem with being offside this tournament, and it really kills momentum because I think they've had more goals disallowed from being offside than they have actually scored, which as a fan, it kind of sucks, and as a team, that sort of sucks because it's like you start to build this expectation that every time they score, you always have to be looking that at that assistant referee to see if they got the flag up, and... It makes celebrations of goals a lot more difficult. You, you can't really celebrate right away because you're, that's just always going to be in the back of their minds. And I don't expect that to change for the rest of the tournament because they've done it pretty much every game thus far. I think this game they had two goals overturned from being offside, two of which came from the second half of extra time, the first of which came from Kristen Press and the second from Alex Morgan. But I believe there were a couple more this game, if it not at least one more. I could be mistaken on that. I have to go back and watch the whole game just to be sure. But it, it, it's a problem for the team. I don't know if it's because they're too giddy. They might be a little bit nervous. I, I don't know what it could be. Maybe the communication between the midfielders and the forward line just isn't up to speed who knows what's going on in that regard but it's very 
uncharacteristic for the U.S. And I'm just curious to see how that's going to end up playing out post-Olympic play. I'm sure the whole team is going to be looking to work on that as well. So take that for what you will. I think that there, that problem will still exist for the match against Canada and the final if they end up qualifying for it. But at the end of the day, they just got to score as many goals as they can. The defense is going to continue the struggle. They will continue to struggle with not being called offside, but they've got to do what they've got to do to go ahead and get over the line, and I think they're going to need multiple goals to do that against Canada. There's one other point I want to touch on before moving on to the Canada-US preview. So, I want to talk about the penalties for a second. The fact that, so the obviously the most nerve-wracking part of this game was when the second half of extra time ended, the referee blew the whistle, and we went into penalties. And for a fan, this can be one of the most intense moments because of the fact that you just, penalties can be very unpredictable and in my opinion, a very unsatisfying way to decide a game, especially one in a competition this big. And for those of you who might not remember, going back to two very big moments in US women's national team history, at the last Olympics in Rio against Sweden, the US was knocked out by Sweden based on a game that was decided on penalties. And then going back even further, I believe, to the 2011 World Cup, if I'm not mistaken, the U.S. lost the final against Japan on penalties. So the U.S.'s relationship isn't the greatest when it comes to penalties. And it was, as a fan, I couldn't help but kind of think to myself, oh boy, here we go again. The, the reason being is because if the U.S. had hypothetically lost this game on penalties to the Netherlands, you start to worry about the future of this team in terms of their relationship with penalties because a lot of times in sport, the game a lot of times is mental, right? If you are mentally confident in your skills and in your team, you will more than likely perform well. If everybody's feeling confident, the whole team likely performs better. And it just has this cascading effect to where you're churning out win after win after win and your confidence builds. However, if the U.S. had been knocked out of this tournament on penalties again, it starts to kind of creep into at least the mind of the fandom. I don't know about the players personally, but as an athlete, that can kind of mess with your head a little bit because then in future big competitions, if the U.S. goes on penalties, if they all they remember is, okay, getting knocked out of the Olympics twice on penalties, getting knocked out of the final of the World Cup on penalties, that can mentally wear on you as an athlete, and it it would have really been concerning for me if the U.S. kept having this history of losing on penalties because that would have really stunk. Of course, we do have very positive memories of that, including the 1999 World Cup, but that was so long ago that point is kind of moot. But with a lot of these players, why this means so much is because these players have been around for the last 10 years, and within those last 10 years, they've been exposed to all these penalty situations. So... It's just kind of some food for thought as to what might have been. Again, this is kind of a moot point because the U.S. did win based on penalties. So I think this was a very big mental hurdle for the team as a whole to really overcome and get over the line and win. So I guess I'm very proud of the team in that respect. And it gives me a lot of encouragement and hope for the rest of this tournament. Because if they can overcome a, a big mental hurdle such as winning this game on penalties and given their past history with penalties, I don't think that there's anything that they can't do. And this team is just, it's very capable of doing many great things and I can't wait to see what they do for the rest of the tournament. So now that will do it for my thoughts on the US Women's National Team versus Netherlands match. But my friends, I wanna know what you make of the game. Whatever you think, you know the comment section is, let me know. All right, so 